What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Franco and you're watching the Franco Photo Vlogs. I, uh, I'm heading downtown to uh, go take a look at this e-bike that, as you can tell from the title, um, I'm going to review today. So I've had my share of e-bikes and um, there was things I liked about all of them, there was things that I didn't like about a lot of them. Um, and this is a, a bike that hopefully corrects all of that. My first e-bike started off with a uh, a rad. What was it? A rad? Oh snap! It was a uh, rad rover. I think like the rad rover one or two, uh, and it was great. But battery life was meh. Top speed was meh. Uh, super comfortable ride though, and lots of accessories, which was pretty cool. But um, other than that, it was an okay bike. Good, good build quality, which was nice. Uh, then I actually got rid of that and I bought a Rad City. reason why I bought a Rad City was because the Rad Rover gave me the impression that the um, battery life was terrible on the fat tire bike because of the fact that it was so much, or it had so much rolling resistance. So basically, I thought a skinnier tire uh, and a later generation battery and motor would probably be uh, better suited for me. So I got rid of the Rad Rover, bought the Rad City, I think like the Rad City 3 or something like that. I think they're up to 4 now or, or 5. But um, that bike was great. I got a decent range on that one. I never killed the battery. I also never like tried to kill the battery, so I, I didn't uh, ever actually get to do it. Um, but that bike was great um, for a lot of reasons. The only thing I didn't like about it was it was super dorky. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm 37 years old. I got kids. I'm a dad. You know, so I'm not really worried about looking cool anymore. But it was like dad dorky to the extreme you know like white new balance sneakers and sweater vest dad dorky type stuff so i didn't like that particular thing about it other than the looks so looks aside i did like the bike got a good range uh, very little rolling resistance and you know a lot of fun overall the only thing is it only did 20 20 miles an hour at the time i kind of was getting over that 20 mile an hour you know top speed i wanted something a little quicker I ended up looking into um, juiced bikes because I, I started liking the idea of having like an electric moped. Um, so I ended up getting a juiced bikes Hyper Scorpion, which was really cool. I liked a lot of things about it, but it was big and heavy. Like it was, you know, it had a lot of rolling resistance as well, even though it had street tires. They were four inches wide, um, and you know. When that battery died, pedaling that thing without power was a nightmare. So I could never see myself riding that bike without power. Um, it did about 27 to 30 miles an hour, depending on the day um, and the rider, of course. But, you know, as far as range and as far as power was concerned, great. Um, loved everything about that. Um, you know, I got bored of that because I ended up buying a Honda Grom. I figured I'd use that more. But now I'm kind of getting the idea back that I want to get an e-bike. So I'm going to go check out this place downtown that, you know, is an e-bike shop. And I'm going to see about this, uh, this ET Cycles T1000 bike. It's supposed to have a, a 15 amp hour battery, I think, or an 18 amp hour battery. I forget the numbers. Um, and it's supposed to get you a, a 100 mile range, depending on, of course, um, assistance level, full throttle only, um, and rider weight. So even if I can get 60 miles out of it, think that would be great because uh, ideally I'd like to use this bike to go and explore you know Daytona um, Cocoa Beach like in places where I can ride on the sand um, and maybe some trails locally by me that uh, motorcycles are frowned upon so um, yeah I'm gonna go check this out take a, take a ride with me and I'll even uh, show you a little test ride footage if I end up buying this thing then I'll make more uh, detailed in-depth videos, but I have a feeling I'm not gonna like it because I've never heard of the name brand before, and I'm more of a sucker for spending a little more for a known name brand, uh, which this I don't think is, but I could be wrong. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll uh, we'll reconvene back to the shop. All right, see you soon. All right, so here we are riding this thing here. This is the uh, ET Cycles T1000. Uh, 500 watt motor, 500 watt hub motor, 
It, uh, it's got a crazy 21 hour battery. That's price is 2200 bucks on this thing. I don't know that it's worth it. I've never heard of this name brand. I'll do a little more research on it. So I don't know if I'll buy it right now, but there it is. Let's mess with it a little bit and see what it, what it feels like. All right, so just a couple of first impressions. It feels like the handlebars are a little too short because any little bit of movement is, is a crazy amount of input into the steering here. Um, not very torquey at all. I don't know that I love that. It's actually pretty loud for an e-bike. just feel like a, a weird humming noise. Listen. It just, it's too, it's too loud for an e-bike. I feel like the Rad bike was way more, um, I don't know, uh, way more refined, way more polished. The only thing I like about this bike better is the battery and the range. So do I spend 2200 bucks on this bike? So just to be clear, this bike costs 2200 bucks in the store. It's a brick and mortar. They tack on a couple hundred bucks because they have to make extra money to, you know, stay afloat. Typical business model, right? Buy it cheap and uh, sell it higher. Uh, you can get this bike online directly from the ET Cycles website for $18.99. However, I know that buying this bike in store means I get it right then and there. I don't have to wait for it. I don't have to assemble it. And I get the customer service. So just notate that. It's giving me more range and deal with the rest of it or do I not necessarily hate it but deal with it and always keep wishing that I had gotten the rad instead. This is also something that I could take home with me right now so as an impulse buyer it's very attractive to me but do I need it? No, not at all. So I don't know. Um, I think I'm gonna have to give this one some thought. It's definitely not you know, I got on it and I loved it. I have to have it. But it does come with a rack, which is nice. Um, front and rear. It's got a decent display. The throttle's kind of weird. I'll show that to you. And um, suspension's mediocre. So I don't know. I don't know how I feel. So, I did also forget to mention one thing. Actually, two things that I don't like about this bike. First and foremost, the brakes. They're hydraulic, but I mean, I mashed that rear brake and it did not, it did not stop me. Like, it slowed down, but it did not stop me when I needed that back tire to stop. So I didn't love that. Um, the other thing is, too, minor little things like, you know, the front and rear lights. Um, I would expect them on a bike at this price point to be, you know, integrated and I don't have to turn them on manually. I'd, I'd want them to be turned on with you know, um, the controller up top, one of the buttons. So basically, the front is hardwired, the rear is not hardwired, which I think sucks. Um, the other thing is, in all honesty, I'm spending 200 bucks more, and the only thing more that I'm getting is the battery. You know, I'm getting 100 miles of range out of this bike, I'm getting 45 miles of range out of the Rad, both advertised anyway, so. Realistically, we don't know what they're giving us. Um, I also don't think that I need 100 miles of range because I'm never going to ride 100 miles. And I always have time to charge my bike. So, I don't know. I think uh, this bike is a no for me. All right, so now just uh, for comparison reasons, for the sake of seeing what the difference is between that bike and this bike would be, uh, this is actually a Magnum. I don't know what model it is, but I'll show you some video. This one is a 750 watt. A Fang hub motor. The other one was a Das Kit 500 watt. Um, it was very loud and clunky. Didn't seem very refined. Um, this one definitely feels like kind of what I'm used to um, on the Rads, for example. But this one has a $600 price tag over the Rad, which I don't know if it's worth it unless this battery is more powerful, in which case it might be worth it. So here, have a look at this.
So I just got back from the, uh, the bike shop and after having a long conversation with the uh, salesman there, um, it turns out that the, the bike that I was comparing the, the original T1000 to, which was the Magnum, I forget the name brand, for, excuse me, I forget the model, but um, it turns out they use two different drivetrains and so because of that, I come to realize that a Bafang motor is probably one of the best out there. I haven't tried um, any mid-drive bikes yet, but as far as hub motors are concerned, Bafang is probably my favorite. Um, so with that said, uh, I did notice that it was a lot more refined, a lot smoother, a lot torquier. Yes, the T1000 was a 500 uh, watt hub motor and the Magnum was a 750, so that's the difference there. But it was definitely smoother, it was a lot quieter. Uh, the brakes were better on the Magnum, they actually skid and stopped like I needed it to. Um, suspension was much better, it was a much better ride overall. Um, the only major difference in my opinion was the battery um, between the two. Now, one was 2600 bucks, one was 2200 bucks. The battery on the T1000 was uh, a 21 amp hour versus a 17 and a half amp hour on the Magnum, so, Really what you're paying for on that T1000 is the battery. So you just gotta kinda make up your mind as to what is more important to you. Uh, in this case, I don't think that a crappier, I'm gonna take that back, not a crappier bike, but in my opinion, uh, a lesser quality bike is worth just a better uh, long range battery. So because if, if you're not gonna enjoy the ride, then it's not gonna make any sense to own a bike that um, you don't love, right? So if, if Magnum, had a 21 amp hour battery for 2200 bucks, then I think I would go with the Magnum. So in conclusion, I really just wanna say that that T1000 for me was not worth the money. Um, it was 2200 bucks at a store locally, but online you can get it for 1900 bucks. Um, and I get that they gotta you know, charge whatever to build the bike and this and that, and, and they gotta make their money at a brick and mortar store more than online. But um, I, I personally think not even 1900 bucks it was worth. I would say that's a $1,500 bike, in my honest opinion. Um, I'm no pro, but based on how I felt when I rode that bike, I felt like that was a $1,500 bike and not a penny more. So take this uh, info uh, however you will. Um, this is my opinion on it. I appreciate you guys watching the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit the little bell icon for notifications. I'll be posting up the videos soon. And just like that, I'm out. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.